President Obama doubled down this week on his pledge to take executive action to block the deportation of millions of illegal immigrants. And some Republican leaders in Congress now say they may shut down the government to stop him. We want to continue to introduce you to members of the GOP's new class of freshman senators who will be part of this fight. Joining us from Oklahoma, Senator-elect James Lankford. And here in Washington, Senator-elect Tom Cotton of Arkansas. Gentlemen, congratulations and welcome to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, President Obama called both of you on election night, two of the relatively few new Republican senators that he reached out to. Senator Cotton, uh, when you see what the president intends to do with executive action on immigration, steps that he apparently is taking to deal with China, uh, and we think a veto uh, of the Keystone Pipeline, do you get a sense that you can do business with him? Well, I hope so, Chris. When President Obama called me on election night, he said that obviously we're going to have our disagreements, but we're going to try to make progress for the people of Arkansas and Americans. I don't want to prejudge what he may or may not do on immigration. I mean, he's been discussing this for months now, and it still hasn't happened, and some voices in his own party after the election last week are urging him not to go forward with it. So I'm hopeful that the president will work with Congress to make any changes to our immigration laws. Uh, Senator-elect Langford, same question. Do you sense, from what you've seen since the election, any give in this president? I don't sense any give from the president. Uh, he did reach out as well on the phone and said, let's try to find ways to work together. And I told him that we had ways to work together a year ago on some basic things, and a lot of things, including immigration. For instance, the House passed in December of 2012 a high-skilled worker visa program that he immediately threatened to veto. Senate never took up. He said, if we don't do everything, we're going to do nothing. And I think we're going to get nothing done if he continues to have that attitude. All right. The first face-off uh, between the president and Republicans is going to be on I immigration. And Mr. Obama took a hard line on executive action this week in Asia. Take a look. I indicated uh, to Speaker Boehner several months ago that if, in fact, Congress failed to act, I would use all the lawful authority that I possess to try to make the system work better. And that's going to happen. That's going to happen before the end of the year. Senator-elect Cotton, I think it's fair to say you come from the Tea Party wing of the GOP. Do you think Republicans should be prepared to either shut down the government by making some links to the funding which runs out on December 11th or to pass these short-term spending bills to keep this fight up with the president? Well, I don't think anyone wants to shut down the government because that doesn't solve the problem. But it's not just Republicans who have spoken on this. The American people have spoken. Immigration was a central issue in my campaign. I won by 17 points. Kay Hagan, Mark Begich, Mark Udall all supported President Obama's amnesty bill. They lost. Mayor Landrieu is about to lose. Greg Orman, Allison Grimes, Bruce Braley, Michelle Nunn, they lost and they supported that bill. The voters of Oregon, not exactly a conservative state like Arkansas, voted two to one against driver's license for illegal immigrants. So the American people have spoken loudly about the kind of immigration reform they want, and it's not what the president is proposing. But y you've got to know, and this has happened before, it happened on Obamacare in 2013, it happened with Newt Gingrich on the budget uh, back in the 90s when Republicans take action, even if it's the president who ends up vetoing what, what uh, links they put to funding, it ends up biting Republicans. Chris, it's actually happened thousands of times over our history that Congress uses our power to control how taxpayer dollars are spent to put limitations on what a president can do. For the last six years with Guantanamo Bay, the president has wanted to close our detention facility there and move terrorists I, to the but, United but States. Are you saying you'd pre be prepared, like with Obamacare, to shut down the government? I'm saying that with Guantanamo Bay, we have fully funded our military spending bills for the last six years and put restrictions on what the president can do in terms of transferring terrorists from Guantanamo Bay to the United States. There's no reason that we can't fund all of our immigration agencies and law enforcement agencies, yet not let the president use taxpayer dollars to give social security numbers and work permits and photo IDs to illegal immigrants. So you'd want to put that kind of link on funding for the immigration well, agencies? Well, I'm hopeful that we won't have to take that action because I'm hopeful the president will listen to what the American people said last week. And again, he's been talking about this for months and it hasn't happened, so I don't want to yet prejudge what he may or may not do. Uh, Senator-elect Langford, after the midterms, uh, the Republican leaders, Mitch McConnell in the Senate, uh, John Boehner in the House, made it pretty clear that they did not want to touch this, this uh, stovetop again after what happened in 2013 with uh, Obamacare and the fact that the government got shut down and wrongly Republicans got blamed. What's changed? 
Well, I think the significant part about this is we still hope to be able to reach out and work with the president on it. We're not pursuing some government shutdown. What I think what people misunderstood at the time was how many people really detested what was happening in their personal lives and their businesses with Obamacare. And we're trying to find every way possible to be able to communicate this is a real problem. It's not a website problem. It's a real problem that affects every single American, every single every single business. This is also an issue like this. But, I, but, but people people no. are not pursuing some government shutdown, though. I mean, let me, let me take you back in the Clinton administration. Uh, President Clinton put out an executive order, and the the House uh, voted against that to defund that executive order. 417 to 2. That was in 1998 because it took over power from the legislative branch in the states. I'd love to see that kind of bipartisanship again for the Congress to step up and say to a president, you do not have executive authority to do this. You have to do your responsibility. We have to do ours. But, but I guess what, I, what I'm trying to get at, and, and, you know, I fully understand there are a lot of members who say, look, you've got to use the power of the purse. That's your, your one advantage, your one piece of leverage over the president to try to change policy. But are you willing to go to possibly shutting down the government to do that? No, Regar it because it seems, uh, let me, uh, my point, I guess, is that regardless of who's responsible in the merits, it seems like Congress gets blamed and the, and the president ends up winning. It certainly would happen in, in October of 2013. Sure, but, but Chris, your assumption is, is that that's the only option that's sitting out here is to be able to shut down the government. I just don't believe that that's true. I think there are ways to be able to fund everything, and I don't think the president has the high ground. He has this perception that everyone in the country thinks like him, and that is not correct. I represent millions of people. Tom Cotton represents millions of people. There are millions of people scattered around the United States that think like us. And though the president thinks only these few crazy conservatives in Congress think this way and no one else does, he has misjudged the American people. The American people really do believe in the rule of law. They have a problem with immigration. They have a problem with illegal immigration. And for the president to step up and say, I'm just going to remove the word illegal and to be able to transition this and, and ignore the law, a lot of people have a problem with that, Republicans and Democrats alike. All right, let me change to another big subject that you guys are going to have to deal with, and that's Obamacare. And the big news this week were those comments by MIT professor Jonathan Gruber, who was one of the architects uh, of Obamacare. Let's take a look at one of the things he said. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever, but basically that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. Senator-elect Lankford, what do you think Professor Gruber's comments show, and what is it that you think, given the fact that the president will certainly veto any outright repeal of Obamacare, what do you think the new Republican majorities in both the House and the Senate can actually accomplish in Obamacare over the next two years? I think Gruber's comments show what is consistent in Washington, D.C. It's this arrogance of centralized government. This administration really believes they're smarter than everyone else, and they need to just create the policy and impose the policy. And states exist only to be able to carry out their wishes from the central government. And I think that's exactly backwards. The best thing that we can actually do is return health care decisions back to states, back to local authorities, uh, health care compact, all the different things that actually return those authorities back to the states. We have $50 billion, $50 billion last year in uh, Medicare fraud, $50 billion. That doesn't get corrected by continually de uh, decentralized control. So we've got to take care of the Independent Payment Advisory Board. We have to get rid of that. Medical device tax, we have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of uh, things like the uh, mandates on individuals. Uh, people are really frustrated with that, and they're going to watch their taxes go up next year, even more than last year. People want to have real answers. It's time but, to stop messaging on this bill. People need some solutions on it because it really affects their life. But Senator-elect Cotton, realistically, what do you think you can get done about Obamacare while President Obama is still in office? Well, our Kansans are our conservative people, but they're practical people as well. They realize it's going to be hard to repeal a law named Obamacare when the president is named Barack Obama. What they want is relief from the immediate harms. The House of Representatives has already passed a lot of bills that would stop those harms, like preventing people from having to pay a tax if they can't afford an Obamacare plan, or businesses from having to pay a tax if they can't provide an Obamacare plan, or letting people keep their plans, as was promised. Those passed the House with bipartisan support. The President has taken some of those steps as an administrative measure. I think that we could pass that legislation again, and the President would be hard hard-pressed to explain why he wants to veto it if he's already done it as an administrative measure and if it has broad bipartisan support. Senators elect, and, and I'm tired of saying that, so would you get to be senators so I don't have to put the elect on there? <laughs> senators elect Cotton and Langford, thank you both. Thanks for coming in.
and we'll follow both of you on your Senate adventures. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.